Caden Live tests the future. Gimp receives a speed bump. Hipster Pixel Browsing. And High Powered Rovers. All this, plus your emails. That's right. It's another great day for Linux, everyone. So let's go. And welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we're <laughs> going to sit back, relax, and take a look at some of the interesting things we found going on in the world of penguins. I'm Ben Stone, joined every week by Hollywood Jill. You know her over in L.A., What's up? How's it going? Hey, oh, oh pretty good. Uh, this week I had fun. I talked about Linux gaming and handed out more LGC flyers at our monthly community hack night, hack night at Riot Games. And as you can see, I also set up new lighting for LGC broadcasting. See. So now I, yeah. <laughs> Some of that was true. Mostly what you did at Riot was tape balloons to people. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Matthew got a blue balloon stuck to his back that he didn't know was there by our friend Ben. <laughs> you know, I, I saw you post that picture in Discord, and yeah. I, I was like, I, I, was worried about, I was worried about Strider. You might know Strider. He's the creator of Lutris. Uh, it's like, you, how do you not know there's a balloon attached to your back? <laughs> and, and then I see him join in Discord later. He's like, oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Ben ran over to get me, Jill, take a picture. And Matthew had no like, no clue. It was awesome. <laughs> it was Strider. <laughs> um, been playing with stuff. Stay tuned. Uh, I'll be talking about Dells. Uh, playing with UDev rules. You ever have to mess around with UDev rules? Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> Not fun. I, I was talking yeah. in the uh, pre-pre-super shows on Saturday. I was talking to Jordan. I was like, Jordan, do this for me. I don't want to learn anything. I'm old. And... <laughs> He came up with a solution that, you know, worked for the most part, but it wouldn't work for the particular use case. And I, I did a deep dive into that business and finally got everything back up and running. And I achieved the goal that I was looking for with the video encoders trying to rename two identical devices and to create a sim link at start and lock it to because serial number, everything else was set up the same way. I found I could lock it to the what the kernel identified it, what USB port it was plugged into. Made that work. Turned out that OBS didn't care about that. And it's like, no, mm -mm. still going to do it the way I do it. So I was kind of yeah. sad about that. It's like, well, Aww. I learned a lot of stuff. If you would have gotten a hold to me Monday afternoon, I could have provided some education with you, Dev. Um, but that's gone. Poof. So <laughs> let's get into yeah. it. Uh, we wanted to just bring this up right at the get-go uh this this happened was it was it yesterday day before yes yeah this business got mm -hmm. thrown out and that's up in arms arm kills off its anti-risk v smear site after the own staff revolts underhanded tactic and hey arm really did put up this web zone i went to it looked at it they kind of attacked it on five points uh open architecture risk v risk five what do you want to call it they were hitting it on cost, mm -hmm. ecosystem, fragmentation, security. I'm not joking about that. They really did. They went there. Uh -huh. And just design <laughs> assurance. And I'm sure you can web archive the website that they put up. But Jill, it really reminded me of like 90s era anti-open source FUD. Like that would have made Redmond. Would have made Microsoft yeah. blush. Oh, definitely. Especially since ARM is heavily reliant on the open source ecosystem. I mean, this is ridiculous. <laughs> you know, R R Risk V is a standard that the whole community has agreed upon. So, um, and I guess ARM just didn't want competitors. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. So it's going to make ARM better to have this competitor in, in the space. And, and there are obviously already there we're we're going to be seeing risk 5 and in, in nvidia chipsets for our gpus and they're already uh western digital's already using them in um for microcontrollers and they're in the hard drives <laughs> this is true i mean uh yeah. from arm itself they said i'm going to quote them as our intention <laughs> in Creating a web page to offer key considerations around commercial risk 5 based products was to inform uh, a lively industry debate and that that's not how it came across kind of gave me the sads because i didn't expect anything like this from arm arms like oh yeah. you're cool you're cool you, you know but what they did no matter what their intentions were is that they gave the risk v architecture a gang of free advertising and yes. 
the average person, you know, making decisions like that are like, wait a minute, why, why are you worried about this architecture that doesn't cost anything to license and we can just use gratis? Uh, maybe I should look into it. So that happened. Yeah. Um, Katie and Lives testing the future. Yay. Yay. So this is a, actually a, a really awesome update. It is um, experimental and um, uh, they, they need our input to make this better. And uh, finally, like the more industry standard editors, the video and audio separate automatically in the timeline when you drop them in. And that's, that's huge because all the major players in the industry have this functionality. And I noticed overall, it seemed much faster at previewing video clips. And now you can lower the resolution playback from the video clips, um, which is another, uh, another um, utility that's always used uh, in like Premiere and and um, Final Cut, and this is essential for vi for editing high res video because uh, a lot of a lot of people with uh, in their computers can't edit 4K in real time. So um, you you need to be able to bring down the resolution. Hmm. Yeah, and, it's helpful to always yeah. do the proxying on that. I tried it on our production box 1804 LTS, and it didn't. This came as an app image, I believe, uh, for yes. testing. It's available. All this is going to be in our show notes, all the fun links and happy stuff. Uh, loaded it up. It did the last thing. It was like, we need to restart KDN Live to apply some themers. It, it didn't last time I went and tested this. Click through it. Get it up. It ran. No massive mm -hmm. issues with it. I tried to take the Pepsi challenge, but it still does a thing with the thumbnail previews for audio and video. It did split yes. the uh, audio and video. <laughs> For me, I was like, ah, that's just don't do that for me because we have separate audio and video tracks. But that's a good feature for people doing audio editing and a video yeah. editor. That that's mm -hmm. a story or a rant for a different time. But the mm -hmm. thumbnails disappeared, which get it makes things confusing what track you're working on because I'm lazy yes. and don't name tracks. I rely on the thumbnails to keep an idea of where I'm at. But good on them. Good to see you. it's um They've been working on this uh, 1.5 years of work. They want people to come and test it, hammer it, break it. Yeah. And yeah, I'm going to be submitting a lot of bugs, too, to it. <laughs> send so. in the bug reports. Yeah. That is the best <laughs> thing you can do for an open source project. And yeah, good work, guys. Good work. Uh, Blast from the Past is still in, eh, still in development. OpenShot 242. It is out. More effects, more stable, and more fun, question mark. Yeah, yeah, Ben, you couldn't get it to work on your 1804. Uh, Man, this thing, all, like, <laughs> to the point of saying disparaging remarks about my mother. Um, <laughs> it, I, I, I think this was another app image, and I launched it. Uh, it, it launched after a second, and it had a pop-up dialogue. I don't know if it was a tooltip or something like that. Couldn't click through it. I tried. I got bored of clicking, so I closed it. Uh, Jill, you had a better... Uh, oh yeah um, actually it, it worked beautifully for me on ubuntu 1604 lts hmm. and i purposely te tested it on the older lts because a lot of these experimental app images sometimes don't work on 1804 yet <laughs> so instead of testing it on my 1804 box i just just went back to a previous lts and um there's a lot of really good um, updates to OpenShot. And actually, one of my complaints over the years is that OpenShot was not good for audio editing. But they've made some major improvements. The creator, Jonathan Thom uh, Thomas, knows that this is audio editing is, an, is a weak point for OpenShot. And um, one of the improvements he, he made is that audio playback and editing is a lot better. Um, you used to get lots of pops and clicks when you would play back your audio streams. And also has a new feature called auto audio mixing, which works very well. So when you overlay tracks, it automatically um, adjusts the audio, uh, the gain on each of your um, videos um, with audio in it. It adjusts them um, so that one's not overly loud than the other, which is a really nice feature, for, especially for beginners who don't know how to edit such things. Mm. And um, uh, the the really awesome thing, you know, the beauty of OpenShot is that it's it, it's it is easy to learn and use, and it is really good for the beginners and um, much easier to learn and use than Caden Live is. And but they've been working on it, its stability, and this 
this version is much more stable. It did not crash on me. I, I had it up for an hour and was editing clips on it. And that's the first time it didn't crash on me after an hour. It's good. So to it has to be stable to be usable. <laughs> well, the, the, so. I think you could say something like the Balmer of like developers and like stability. Stu that has always been yes. like, you know, <laughs> one of the negative things. KD and Lives had problems, but I would say definitely in the last five years, I, far less spite crashes. You you can reliably use OpenShot to and much to my surprise, KD in Live uh, without that constant fear of. It's, it's, it's just going to go down. It's going to poof, as in you're going to lose all your work. Yeah. Uh, they've also <laughs> moved their development to GitLab, and Yay. they've worked <laughs> to improve the export dialog when you're sending stuff out to give you some more options than that. And they've added seven new effects. Now, uh, I'm talking about OpenShot. I moved away from it because the two-point not development branch, just I, I don't know where it's at, and for the longest time, wasn't really digging it. I used it for classes I was teaching the 1.4 branch uh, because yes. of what it did. It was like a really well done movie maker type application that you could take somebody who was interested in. I want to put music behind my dog running in the lawn. And <laughs> I, I could take somebody completely unfamiliar with non-linear video editing, sit them down in front of that or a couple of people at a time usually and say, okay, this is how I use it. It was very user friendly it was intuitively laid out yeah it didn't try to be fancy mm -hmm. and it seems to have gotten away from that so um, yeah it's getting more complex because they're, they're trying to be i think a little bit more like kaden live <laughs> but but they the beauty of it is you know to keep um my suggestion is that they of course keep it simple like ven is saying because a, a lot of people coming from you know iMovie and whatnot this is this is perfect for them <laughs> on Linux. <laughs> well, maybe it doesn't want to be that product. It definitely, the One X series was that product and it was good yeah. at that. And the one thing I liked about OpenShot is you could still definitely make it do things. I mean, it had stuff yes. under the hood. You had to dig for it. Yeah, but, they dig. But um, they kept it hidden. Hmm. Yeah. It's good to see the project continuing on. So, Jill, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, somebody told me that. Uh, you, you can only install VMs in one Linux distribution. Oh, gosh. Right? That's how <laughs> yes. it works. Only one? <laughs> no, no way. This is a Robo Linux. Robo Linux lets you easily run Linux and Windows without dual booting. There's there's some uh, pre-made templates that, that help, help working with VirtualBox easier. And to me... It, yeah, this is not easier. It's it's easier to teach someone how to use VirtualBox in the in the Linux distro they're already using than um, than having to install a separate distro for it. <laughs> so, but it actually, I did play around with it, and it did uh, it does work. It does work very well. But it again, it takes longer to to show someone how uh, how to use VirtualBox under under this distro than than it would on your own your own distro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, Mike G commented in our show notes. Uh, he's like, sounds like somebody yeah. had an assignment deadline. Um, yeah. <laughs> possibly. I don't know. It, this is from Linux.com. And that, that's my takeaway from it. I was like, so wait a minute. Wait, am you know, I missing something? Because I, I, I skim articles. I'm guilty of doing stuff like that. I went back and read everything. It's like, no, no. This is, this is a distro that semi sort of kind of streamlines installing uh windows in virtual box and what <laughs> what made me laugh is the author of this article tested this in a VM in virtual box yeah just, <laughs> boom, uh, yeah but they do have something <laughs> called stealth vm that does offer yes. a semi-automated vm install but jill I, I agree with you i mean it definitely if you are <laughs> if you have the know-how to install Linux or just just the initiative to install Linux, you're capable yeah. of getting a VM set up. That's not going to throw yeah. you from, you know, um, then I, I, could, I guess I could see the argument of like, well, what about grandma or grandpa? Uh, the, how would they know? And I was like, don't lie to yourself. They're not going to be trying to install it in the first place. Um, hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I also noticed that the, you know, the, the way they advertise it, you know, to to run um, uh, 
run you can run windows in linux without getting viruses you know and that, and that was their whole their whole pitch of course <laughs> to, to to cater to the people that are scared about you know getting a virus on windows <laughs> <laughs> oh, go, if you want some cringy stuff, listen, man, we're not poo-pooing on this distribution, but the way their web zone is put together with it, it's some questionable wording of like almost fear mongering, but you need to use in our version of Chrome and this yeah. will protect you. And I'm like, <laughs> yes, yeah, so does all, you know, asterisks and indexes. They do the same thing. Um, but hey, maybe it's your thing. GIMP. It's getting faster. Yay, new GIMP. <laughs> GIMP 2.10.4 is out. Latest update of GIMP's new stable series delivers bug fixes, simple horizon straightening, asynchronous font loading. That's a big thing, I'll tell you in a moment. Font tagging and more new features. Whoa, faster start time, Jill. What's it about? Oh, yeah. Well, what's awesome is so now when the GIMP loads, it doesn't have to load the full font library before, before it um, completely loads up. So it does it interactively when you're in the program. So it loads the fonts as you need them. So I thought that was really awesome because that that's one of the, besides the effects, that's one of the slowest things uh, of uh, that slows down GIMP when you're launching it. <laughs> so that's really, really cool. And also the font, uh, they have font tagging now, which is a, a, a feature that a lot of users use in, in Photoshop. And that's good for if you have hundreds of fonts installed and you want to categorize them. And this allows, you know, you click a tag like, you know, work fonts, uh, fun fonts. And and um, you can, so you can categorize all your fonts. And uh, it said it had better PSD support, which is always needed for all those uh, Photoshop users out there. We'll, GIMP will, will uh, provide all those effects and um, stylings uh, better. No. They were talking about the horizon straightening, looking at that, and they were showing like yeah. uh, there's a common use case um, with the measurement tool in GIMP to, to calculate the angle rotation when horizon's uneven. And they showed an example of, you know, just a shot with like the water line at a beach and something like that. And it can now remove the extra step of having to perform that rotation manually after measuring the angle. I mean, you just click it, yeah. straighten button tools do its thing and if you want to try this which i'm very happy to report it is available on flat hub and it's officially maintained so nothing yeah. to worry about yeah i used the the ppa so that worked well too um mm -hmm. i i don't know uh i'm curious <laughs> I, I want to play with it to see how much faster it starts because right now it starts before i fully release the mouse yes button. Well, ever since the 2.10 release, you know, they made that one so much faster that, you know, I honestly didn't know, notice a huge difference, it, but it, it did boot, you know, it did load faster. But when you have, you know, so many cores on your processor, <laughs> it, it boots fast no matter what, mm -hmm. even, you know, even the old, old versions do. So <laughs> let's see what do we have up next. Hipster pixel text-based browsing. Mm -hmm. um, this is a thing. Browse. Is that how we're going to say it? Browse? Does that work? Yeah. I was saying brow SH because you can SH, SH into it. Hipster. <laughs> um, well, Browse is a fully modern text based browser. It renders anything that a modern browser can. We're talking HTML5, JavaScript, video, and even WebGL used from a terminal. Its main purpose is to significantly reduce bandwidth, thus, both increase browsing speeds. And you're basically going to use this to browse sites that you're not supposed to at work. Through SSH. Um, <laughs> yeah, and this one actually worked again for me on Ubuntu 1604 with uh, no problem in Xterm. And I'm always happy happy when when you know most most of the um, CLI utilities I, I check in X term because it just usually always works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, but this is a really nice alternative to the CLI browsers Lynx L Y N X and E Lynx or Lynx L I N K S. Um, but it of course is not as fast because it is rendering the HTML5, the CSS, and the JavaScript. And you can even watch YouTube videos with it, which was really really actually pretty cool and well I, um, i'm gonna have to have the brakes yes. right there because you see you, you can screw around and you can screw around with the links because you can you, you hit slash dot maybe reddit something like that but you can't watch youtube videos i mean you can't go like full like screwing off mode this yeah this is yeah. enablement man 
Yeah, this lets you do all the things. Well, you you could actually in Lynx and Inlynx, there were plugins that would let you go to a media player under terminal and play play it through AA Live or or CAA Live, CACA Live. So that was the thing. But this is just, you know, you can view it just like you would in Firefox. And in fact, it uses Firefox on its uh, back end. Mm -hmm. It uses the APIs from Firefox. And, and it worked for it you greatly. Didn't, yes. <laughs> didn't work for Arthur. And he's watching right now. Um, he tried it on Arch. <laughs> yes. You know and love that. I tried it on 1804. It started up and it was like, yeah, peace out. But it left an instance of headless Firefox running in the background. Just like, what yeah. is this? All right. <laughs> um, I was curious. You can try it directly from their website. Well, you don't have to do from website. Just SSH <laughs> uh, browse at dot SH and... They have like a, you can get in there for five minutes. I wanted to see what Linux Schemecast looked like. It's like, wow, that, that, it looks like it needs a fixie and can of PBR yeah. maybe. I don't know. Uh, cool, questionable use, but still neat. Definitely worth a mention. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you, you remember seeing Moon, right? You've seen that? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, you called you titled this Ubuntu Gertie because of that. Yes, <laughs> yeah, it did because uh, well, uh, meet the astronaut AI that runs on a computer. It's a companion, not cube, is what I'm calling it. Rolls off the tongue because it sounds better than Simon. I'm just kidding. What does Simon yes. stand for, Jill? A uh, crew interactive mobile companion, and it can see, hear, understand, and speak with act astronauts and the cool thing about it that i thought was awesome it is voice controlled so it frees up uh, up the hands of the astronauts to perform you know scientific studies and to gives fix them things nightmares i'm sure yes <laughs> yes <laughs> and it's got a cute little face to boot they wanted to make it friendly looking and um, um but i also thought this was a cool use of the ibm watson but so so it is cloud-based which brings up a question, <laughs> a space cloud? <laughs> Should we call it space cloud, like Ben said? <laughs> it was what I'm thinking about, man. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Space clouds, or we call it Nexus. I know that's a ridiculous thing, but my brain definitely went like tap, tap, tap. I was like, what? It's like, we're above the clouds. Can, can I guess it would still be clouds. Hi, Gertie. Yeah. Um, he's hanging out there with Frank. Frank keeps a weird company. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is I, I honestly out of all this most surprising thing was is that this thing is for lack of a better word um running in the cloud and yes it can be updated on the fly I, now i want to know what type of i know i could have should have googled this my apologies ladies and gentlemen is what type of link they currently have to the ISS. yeah yeah i, I was curious about that too because the article doesn't go in detail and i actually tried to do a search on it and there's not information on it <laughs> maybe it's secret <laughs> so <laughs> i don't know man um nexus nebula i'm going for nexus man because i want to believe picard and uh kirk are still hanging out and yes yes definitely <laughs> maybe <laughs> that that's good. a thing so mm -hmm. something we've said on this show multiple times is if you get physical access to the device it don't really matter i mean security doesn't do you a whole lot of good uh, Neil Wynn has a little article um, about a Ubuntu bug that allows anyone with physical access to bypass your lock screen. Jill, what type of uh, sorcery needs to be implied? Oh, gosh. Okay. This works when by removing the hard drive while the system is suspended. So then if you put it in another computer, <laughs> the hard drive in another computer, you can uh, get out, uh, uh, bypass the lock mode uh, by putting in a new password. Or um, if that doesn't work, holding your power button down briefly, and then it goes to a black screen where it automatically goes into into, into the uh, uh, distro. So, <laughs> so and uh, yeah, that's that's a, it's actually a little scary, but you know this this kind of stuff does happen. And um, <laughs> my answer to it is is use a instead of using Ubuntu's default screensaver, try X screensaver standalone. It's secure. And <laughs> and also this this is very similar to what happened to OS 10 several years ago. Mm. Uh, yeah, but that didn't require that you remove the hard drive and put it in another computer. <laughs> do, do you know what so, I use for uh, on-site security? <laughs> use disk encryption 
and rattlesnakes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> honestly, though, I mean, encryption really wouldn't have done you any good in this particular situation because you're already logged yes. in. And this is yeah, you're already logged in. And you know what? If yeah. somebody's got physical access and they're already there, they probably brought some pliers to pull your fingernails out with. So encryption, not going to do you that much good in the first place. Uh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> the security team at Canonical, they said, hey, we're unlikely to fix this since having physical access means an attacker could simply access the hard disk directly. We'll replace the password on it and unlock the computer. While he mm -hmm. didn't mention the pliers, still a whole lot of that. And yeah. that's something you got to watch out for. That and the rattlesnakes. That and yeah. the rattlesnakes. <laughs> so, uh, check this out. Uh, we want to give everyone a big thanks because your support of this uh, allows us to keep everything ad-free. And you kind of get to be our bosses. And one way you can do that is patreon.com, which is not loading. There we go. Yay. Shameless <laughs> plugs. 114 beautiful <laughs> people kicking us $247 to do all this fun stuff. We also get to do things like Tuesday, Thursday and Friday streams. Tuesday, Pedro played some uh, open Morrowind. People seem to yeah. <laughs> dig that. You guys are going to be playing Amarillo, right? Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> not Armadillo. Armello. Armadillo. It's Armadillo, <laughs> man. Don't, don't. Come on. <laughs> That's absolutely a thing. And um, yeah. I'm going to be back Friday for Trivia Night, a.k.a. Yay. FUBAR. That's where we get together and play. Hey, listen, no commercials. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about being kind of question. I can think of a lot of worse ways to spend $4 a month. We want to thank each and every one of you who made that decision because that's not like something you just start throwing money around. Then you get invested yeah. in stuff. But you do get to come hang out in our Discord, which it's not just for gaming. It's a Slack mm -hmm equivalent i would say what we've kind of turned it into very chill place over 100 people in there and you've seen us mention hey we get access to our show notes there are levels to that where you can, can chime in get your name in the credits uncut pods we don't put anything behind the paywall now discord's kind of its walled garden but we have links it's always free in the irc those two are tied together for our live shows and uh but you will get access to our uh production meeting every week and we do that just for the patrons and I really want to do a show about Preacher. I'm dying to talk about that. I got to get that off my chest. Ah, cool. <laughs> also, uh, big thanks to everyone shopping through our Amazon Humble affiliate links. Mm -hmm. That's adding up. Uh, you were going to buy the stuff anyway. But, like, seriously, thank you for, like, taking the time to give us a little taste of that action. But we get to thank somebody. <laughs> Yay, we get to thank Mike G once again. He he has uh, contributed most to the the fine upstanding cannibal wall. <laughs> and he's the giver of heavy objects including our new uh our two and uh, two new Dell machines Look that we're going to use for for our project, uh Bitfrost. <laughs> By frost. Do you see that abject yeah. core? Do you know what that screen is? <laughs> That, that that's nightmare fuel because they come preloaded with windows 10 and this is what you're saying this is i had to plug it in to test it uh that that's as far as i let that nastiness get and i wiped them mm -hmm. here they are they're optiplex 3010s they are i3s mm -hmm. and they got we were going to do the nooks what we're doing is with bifrost is setting everything up to every, Every host is going to get their own box with their own audio stock, own video stock, freeing us up. Things like, hey, we would like to talk to a game developer. Hey, we'd like to talk to an open source developer. Then we can just boom, pull them on and we don't have to worry about the system going down and chains of fire like it normally does. So that really helped us out with that business. I'm going to be setting those up this afternoon. I'm going to set one up. Uh, tune in Saturday for Linux Gamecast <laughs> Weekly because that's going to be a hot mess because that's yes. how we test things in production on saturday night but yeah thanks everyone Testing with all the fires <laughs> for helping us out making our dreams come true and uh we are cranking up to the goals just getting started so how about a slice of pie yay let's see if i got a fancy graphic this week yay fancy graphic. <laughs> oh you did okay yeah, cool I did. Yeah, <laughs> this is awesome this is a the, this is have your very own Mars rover here on Earth. And um, this is a turtle pie. And it is. It's really it's a it's a miniature rover. And um, they actually uh, this was actually start designed by winners of international Mars rover challenges, which is uh, really, really cool. So it's basically, you know, a a miniature 
ro rover and um, that you can use for uh, experimental studies and science experiments. And it's rugged and it can go anywhere. It can go, you know, climb mountains and and um, all the things. And um, they have kits that start at uh, $1,049 mm -hmm. for a kit that you can build. And um, you can also buy one for $2,199 pre-assembled. And soon STL files will be available for 3D printing, which is really cool. And of course, it's all controlled by a Raspberry Pi 3. And um, what was interesting on the website is, is uh, they said everything, the, the only OS that everything's fully functional, including the camera, is on Linux. So, mm. yay! <laughs> this thing looks industrial grade, too. This is not like uh, something that you would accidentally step on and crush. No. Yeah, this is a really good robot. <laughs> kind of give it the business. Uh, I don't know if they had it in the States, but I remember, I think it was like, in, it was before secondary school, I think. We had a turtle on the Apple II. Do you oh, remember that? It was yeah, a triangle yeah, yeah. that you had to move around. I was like, is this is more yeah. of that. And I was like, no, this is cool. And I immediately thought to myself, <laughs> hey, if, you, if you're a teacher, educator, something like that, that's mm -hmm. reasonably priced for something that you can get a lot of use out of in a lot of different ways. Oh. Oh, so, definitely. And especially good on them for making the um, STIs available so you can print that or the STLs yeah. uh, to do that at home. I'm just going to pretend this doesn't exist because I'm not responsible enough to have anything like this. No, <laughs> no, this would be cool. actually this would be really cool. I'd like I like this. I think Steve has to like this as well. <laughs> um, Gigabyte. <laughs> Single board PC is like a Raspberry Pi on steroids, but it's got a steroid powered price. I don't know if that made sense in my head before it came out of my noise tube. Uh, quad core Intel CPU and <laughs> dual LAN. Um, this is yet another in the long line of like, we're going to make an itsy bitsy teeny weeny uh, x86. This is running the Celery N3450, boost up to 2.2 gigahertz, uh, SATA 6, 6 gig, and eight gigs for the memory, which this is good. USB two, USB 3.1. Um, they can do 1080p, no problem. And they, they do compare it. They're like, well, this is just like a big raspberry Pi to which I'll retort Jill. No, it's yeah. not. Cause it's $200. Yeah. yeah. It's $200. And honestly, at that price point, you might as well buy an Intel nook <laughs> and take it apart if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> but you know it is there's so many other companies are putting something in this space mm -hmm. and honestly i think for that price uh, uh, i'll go on, on the on the risk five architecture myself <laughs> so. you know i was thinking about that was uh <laughs> did you see earlier this week that sapphire is going to be rolling out not for 200 but for four because once you're in the 200 range yeah if you can mm -hmm. if you've convinced yourself to spend that kind of money you, you can throw another 200 on there because they're going to be releasing a AMD Ryzen V1000 APU board. Oh, yes. That, awesome. Yeah. That is sweet. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Steambox right there. Um, yeah. Nice big fancy Steambox. Throw a, make sure you got Kernel 417 on there with the uh, Vega integrated graphics. But those are going to be like 400 bucks. So I'm, hey, <laughs> Sapphire, call me. I want one for testing. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be things. Um, if you want to get in touch mm -hmm. with us, because I'm sure we got more things wrong than we get right. We do like to say, you know, all of the uh, Linux news without any of that pesky accuracy. Um, send us a note. Head over to LinuxGameCast.com. Contact button. We got a thing there. You can fill it out. Hey, Saturday, this show, whatever. Thoughts, hints, suggestions, ideas, things maybe we should do. Just uh, select the right topic. Give us a name. Give us an email. Uh, subject. Message. Prove you're smarter than a bot, as Pedro likes to say, but he can't because he's still <laughs> stuck on a train. Stuck on a train. <laughs> oh, poor Pedro. And apparently now works for Microsoft. <laughs> Maybe I made that up. Maybe I didn't. Um, but mm -hmm. we'll get back to you. That's not going off to any. That is all hosted locally on our server. It doesn't go out to the Internet. So just make sure you give us a resolvable email address. It doesn't even have to be real. So. Mm -hmm. One and only this week, Jill, um, from Ryan. Yeah, Ryan writes from, in. What does he have to say to us? Okay. If and this is referring to the last few weeks about the about the question, what's the one thing that would change Linux adoption? Mm -hmm. And last week someone someone said, you know, we need more standardization. 
So Ryan commented, if that guy wants a committee to decide what is and and is not Linux to standardize things, I'd suggest they use FreeBSD. That's an OS by committee. Not saying it's better or worse. It's just closest to what they're asking for. And I thought this answer was brilliant. <laughs> mm. I thought it was really, we got this tweet, you know. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I thought that, that was brilliant because, yes, FreeBSD. Uh, free BSD. Well, one of the it, it's it's standardized, but yes, not all the hardware works well on it. <laughs> so it's improving, but it, yeah, hey. there's still issues with getting Wi-Fi working. And <laughs> but it is an awesome distro, and that is a good answer. <laughs> well, Ryan, thank you. <laughs> that, that's pretty interesting. I mean, <laughs> it is in a constant state of flux, is when you think of Linux. Always, I mean, week by week by week, and yeah, it, it hasn't slowed down since I first picked up. Slackware in like 1995. It's a exactly. constant adventure. Now, when you think of BSD, I also think of like the BSD license. Yes. Yeah. Which doesn't require you to like say anything back or give back anything. Yeah. Any modifications. Give back. Right. Yeah. No GNU there. <laughs> but I will say this if you need to get work done without distractions, BSD is the way to go. Linux has way yeah. too many games on it these days. Um, yeah. <laughs> it has to do all the things and all the things very well. So it, it's, you know, it's it's got to be used for everything, you know, for network, for security, for desktop. And FreeBSD's focus always has been security. So it's really good for the routers and servers and whatnot. Oh, absolutely. I've said that a billion times. <laughs> if I'm going to do anything yeah. web-facing, sorry, I love Linux, but I'm going to be using the BSD yeah. on that. Um, just yes. for zones alone. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Jill, that's going to do it. We survived. We made it. Yay. Oh my gosh. Yay. It's great. <laughs> no, no massive fires. I, I'm sure. Yes. I'm sure the, <laughs> the actual top of my house is on fire right now because everything went too smooth. I'm, I'm going to be yeah. worried the rest of the day. <laughs> Maybe this is my reward for the punishment I'm going to be putting myself through this evening. So through this today. Yeah. Oh, I wish I could be there to help you. I love doing stuff like no, that. I love don't. tearing apart things. You don't want to be and... anywhere near me when I'm doing stuff like this. Because yeah. <laughs> you're messing with something that's like its default state's grumpy and there's nowhere to go from there but downhill. Um, yeah. I know that about myself. <laughs> It'll be a fun time. Uh, I'll try not to throw anything into a wall because I'll have to fix it. Um, thanks for showing up, Jill. Mm -hmm. Where can they get a hold of you? At uh, Jill underscore Linux Girl on Twitter? Yeah, at Jill underscore Linux Girl on Twitter and plus Jill Bryant on Google+. And check out <laughs> LinuxChicks.LA? Yeah, yeah, LinuxChicksLA.org. .org. That, yeah. <laughs> that was close enough for government work. Um, I'm at Vin yes. Stone. You can Google that mm -hmm. uh, if you... Plus, Vince, just type in Vince Stone and Google. It's sad. I don't do vanity checks. The only reason I did it because Pedro mm -hmm. was like, oh, look, it's starting to show up my name on Google when I type Pedro Mateus. And I said, type in Vince Stone. He's like, oh. It's like, yeah. It, it was a stupid <laughs> contest because I'm petty. Um, we'll see you next week. We're going to roll some credits and thank all the beautiful people mm -hmm. making this possible. Click. Yay! Kick its ass, Jill. Beat that microphone up. Oh, yes. Yes, that Excuse me. <laughs> I said yay too happy. <laughs> Listen, I, I put the credits up. Drop an elbow on it. <laughs> okay. Thank you to our executive producers, our producers. Look at how many wonderful people are contributing uh, to our shows. This is just just amazing. <laughs> it's fun. We get to cool, do stuff. Uh, English, Vin. Do cool stuff and bring people in from the community. So... Yeah, so awesome. Bye, dudes. We love you guys. <laughs> Burning fire, dying fire. No, people in dying no, fire. No, we sad. love them. <laughs> well, WW number 126. That's that's awesome. Bye, chat room. <laughs>